Hello, my name is Gideon Hirschfeld and I'm a consultant hepatologist and senior lecturer in hepatology here in Birmingham in the United Kingdom. I look after patients with autoimmune liver disease and I'm pleased to have presented this video abstract of our recent paper just published in Gastroenterology. This represents a very significant breakthrough for patients with primary biliary cirrhosis as we have published a very significant phase two randomized controlled clinical trial of a new agent, obeticoic acid, for patients who are non-responsive to ursodeoxycholic acid. So our study is entitled Efficacy of Obeticoic Acid in Patients with Primary Biliary Cirrhosis and Inadequate Response to Ursodeoxycholic Acid. Our study is a double-blind, randomized, controlled study which is multinational and industry-sponsored by Intercept Pharmaceuticals. Here in Birmingham, we look after autoimmune liver disease in specialist clinics, and we have three clinics that look after patients with primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, and autoimmune hepatitis. The three diseases are rare autoimmune liver diseases that are chronic and progressive. They share many features as to their causes, but in particular, they all lack rational therapy. The topic for our randomized clinical trial is the treatment of patients with primary biliary cirrhosis. This is the most common of the autoimmune liver diseases, and one in a thousand women over the age of 40 have primary biliary cirrhosis. At present, there is only one licensed therapy, ursodeoxycholic acid. Around 30 to 40% of patients, however, fail on this therapy biochemically, and in this group, there is predicted to be a poor outcome with disease progression to end-stage liver disease. The drug that we have tried in this clinical trial is obeticoic acid, a novel and exciting semi-synthetic analogue of kinodeoxycholic acid with potent FXR agonistic actions. This is predicted to therefore be an anticholestatic, anti-inflammatory and antifibrotic agent of significant benefit to patients with cholestatic liver disease, in particular primary biliary cirrhosis. The choice of obeticoic acids as an FXR agonist is particularly apt when one thinks about the multi-compartments that one would wish to tackle in developing new treatments for cholestatic liver disease. These compartments include the hepatocytes, the biliary epithelium, the immune compartments and the bowel. FXR agonists are predicted to have significant impact on all of these compartments. This is a randomized clinical trial in which we randomized 165 patients to therapy with obeticoic acid. We had a placebo group, a group receiving 10 milligrams, 25 milligrams, and 50 milligrams. All patients continued on their dose of ursodeoxycholic acid throughout the study, and the trial duration was three months. In addition, there was an open-label extension in which patients were able to receive obeticoic acid for a further 12 months. As you can see, at trial entry, patients had alkaline phosphatases of between 1.5 to 10 times the upper limit of normal and were randomized to placebo, obeticoic acid 10 milligrams, obeticoic acid 25 milligrams, and obeticoic acid 50 milligrams, with regular follow-up throughout the randomized study duration. Patients were diagnosed with primary biliary cirrhosis according to international criteria and had to have had elevated alkaline phosphatase, AMA positivity, and or a consistent liver biopsy. Patients were between the ages of 18 to 75 without other concomitant liver disease and without significant liver failure or decompensation. They were restricted to not taking any medications that would have impacted on the alkaline phosphatase levels such as steroids, methotrexate, azathioprine, or colchicine. Our primary endpoint was the change in alkaline phosphatase levels between baseline and week 12. We chose this endpoint because there is a burden of information now available that shows significant association with liver biochemistry and clinical outcomes in patients with primary biliary cirrhosis. For example, the recently published PBC supergroup has shown a significant correlation between alkaline phosphatase and bilirubin levels at one year of therapy with ursodeoxycholic acid and outcome. Within the study, there were a number of secondary exploratory endpoints that included the full gamut of liver biochemistry and gamma GT, for example, and in addition, we measured lipid levels, IgM values, and precursors of bile acid synthesis. We also measured the fibroglass growth factor 19 levels because of the predicted effect of FXR agonists on this axis. Our patient disposition is demonstrated in our manuscript, but we screened 222 patients to randomize 165 patients to take part in this randomized controlled clinical trial. As is evident from the manuscript, the demography of our clinical trial is representative of a normal PBC clinic. The vast majority of patients are women, they are taking an average dose of versidioxycholic acid of 15 milligrams per kilogram, and for this trial, the level of alkaline phosphatase at inclusion was just under 300 international units. 
The results of this study are striking for the involvement of over 41 centres across Europe and North America and for the inclusion of 165 randomised patients with primary biliary cirrhosis non-responsive to ursidioxycholic acid. 10% of patients discontinued the study because of pruritus and 82% of patients completed the study in total. Our primary endpoint was met with significant declines in alkaline phosphatase levels across all three doses of obituchoic acid when compared between baseline and week 12. Treatment with obituchoic acid significantly reduced alkaline phosphatase levels and across all three treatment groups alkaline phosphatase levels fell by more than 20%. Over approximately two-thirds of patients had a 20% drop in alkaline phosphatase and around one-third of patients had a 40% drop in alkaline phosphatase levels. When treatment response was reclassified around classical treatment response criteria such as the Paris or Toronto criteria, there were also significant improvements in alkaline phosphatase consistent with patients moving from treatment unresponse to treatment response biochemically across all three dose ranges of obituchoic acid. Furthermore, when looking at the secondary endpoints which were exploratory, there were significant changes in the liver transaminases, the gamma GT levels, and also in falls in IgM levels. In addition, there were predictable increases in lipids which were not considered to be clinically significant. A significant strength of the study is the 12-month open-label extension of use of obituchoic acid, and it was pleasing to see that the biochemical improvement in alkaline phosphatase levels was maintained over the duration of the 12-month open-label study. In keeping with the proposed mechanism of action of obituchoic acid and FXR agonists, we were pleased to be able to demonstrate that there were significant increases in levels of FGF19, whilst the bile acid precursor C4 levels fell, as did endogenous bile acids. In terms of safety, there were no significant safety concerns identified during this randomised study. Of note, 10% of patients discontinued therapy because of pruritus, but it appeared to be the case that pruritus was dose-dependent, with the most severe pruritus occurring in those receiving 50 mg of obituchoic acid. So in conclusion, I'm very excited to be presenting this video abstract of our recently published paper in gastroenterology because it demonstrates very significant and exciting observations of a new drug for patients with primary biliary cirrhosis. At present, these patients lack any additional therapy, and obituchoic acid in a randomized controlled phase two study demonstrated significant benefits in alkaline phosphatase levels, gamma GT levels, as well as demonstrating efficacy through increasing FGF19 levels. In the open label extension, the effects of obituchoic acid were significant and durable, and this demonstrates, hopefully, a drug that has potential for development in patients with primary bilicerosis. Our studies, therefore, in conclusion, support the ongoing efforts to develop obituchoic acid in phase three studies of primary bilicerosis, including potentially an opportunity to evaluate obituchoic acid in other cholestatic liver diseases, as well as inflammatory liver diseases generally.